I'm John Jevons, uh, Director of Ecology Action, a nonprofit organization uh, dedicated to environmentally sound food production. We're located in Northern California in the United States. This is my 43rd year of researching, developing, and teaching biologically intensive food raising. There are people now successfully using this method in 143 countries in the world, in virtually every climate and soil where food is grown. We prepare the soil deep, two feet or 60 centimeters deep. Normally in agriculture, the soil is only prepared six inches or 15 centimeters deep. What does this mean? It means you have four times the nutrient cycling. It means you can grow four times the plants per unit of area, per unit of time. Second thing is we use compost. Compost holds six times its weight in water, so it increases the efficiency with which plants utilize water. Thirdly, because of the deep soil preparation, which puts air in the soil that the microbes need in order to breathe, because they breathe oxygen like you and me, uh, combined with the use of compost, we're able to put four times the plants in a given area. So this means that we have close plant spacing. We use offset spacing. So if you have a dice, you know, like you throw, and the side that has five dots in it, well, that's how all the plants are. They're so close together that when they're mature, their leaves touch or barely touch. It shades the ground by further conserving water. The fourth element is companion planting. Certain plants like to grow together, just like people, and others like to be apart, similarly. So green beans and strawberries like to grow close together rather than far apart. Why not? If you want to have an exciting combination, you have 100 plants of wheat with one plant of chamomile. Both the chamomile and the wheat will be stronger. If it's one plant of wheat to one plant of chamomile, they'll both be weaker. Exciting once you understand the plant personalities. The fifth element is you want to have 60% of your growing area in carbon and calorie crops. What do I mean by that? The carbon and calorie crops are grains, winter grains, such as wheat and oats and barley and cereal rye. The summer grains are corn, amaranth, quinoa, sorghum, and pearl millet. They produce a tremendous amount of carbon for the compost pile and a significant amount of calories to eat. Then the sixth thing is that 30% of your area needs to be in special root crops. Now what do we mean by special root crops? These are ones that produce high amounts of calories in a small area in a short amount of time. So the seven are potatoes, sweet potatoes, leeks, salsify, garlic, uh, Jerusalem artichoke, and one other that I'm forgetting. Now, it turns out that these crops can produce per month up to 20 times the calories that the grains produce, that the 60% crops produce. So in the world of the future, if you want to have the smallest area to grow your food in, you need to have 30% of that area in these special high calorie producing root crops. It means you can condense your nutrition in the form of calories into a fraction of the space. The Asian Vegetable Research and Development Center in Taiwan about 15 years ago said that in the world of the future, which I say is now, that in order for people to live well, that they would have to have a lot of root crops in their diet. It tastes good. You can do excellent recipes with them, but it's a difference. Now, we're still uh, have 10% left, 60%, 30%, that's 90%. Uh, we're growing in 60% of the area, all of our uh, compost materials. In 90% of the area, we're growing all our calories, but we're missing some vitamins and minerals. So in the last 10%, we grow 
the missing vitamins and minerals that are not in the other crops. We take probably, five, that takes 5% of the area, and in the other 5% of the area, we can grow our income. Now, the, the next thing, the seventh element of uh, Grow Biointensive is using open pollinated seeds, the heritage seeds that are still with us because they perform so well for centuries. And also you can save seed from them, where with hybrids you can't. They don't grow true to type. Last but not least, this is a whole system. You can't put all the plants close together and not use compost and not prepare the soil deeply and have it work. We had uh, an intern here from Latin America who had been to the university for six years and he had a good education. He came here and in one month of internship out of six, he said he'd learned more than he'd learned in six years. He didn't learn more information, but he learned the system. And the system told him where to put all the pieces he'd learned at the university. So uh, it made him more effective uh, at what he does.